Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson 34 of my Z80 assembly programming tutorials. Now, we looked last week at how to do graphics on the computer's links, and this is going to be the second lesson on the computer's links. We're going to look this time at the keyboard and the sound. Now, it's going to be a pretty quick lesson, actually, because most of it's very similar to what we've done before. The keyboard is very similar to a lot of the other systems, systems like the, the Enterprise or the Amstrad CPC, for example, and the sound is actually almost identical to the ZX Spectrum, the only difference being it's got a volume control. So let's have a look and see what reading the keyboard and using the sound is like. So how does this keyboard on an 8-bit system work? Well, in the case of the computer's links, like most systems, we read in from each line of the keyboard in a turn. And when we read in, we get a bit mask and each key will be 1 if the key is up or 0 if the key is pressed down. Of course, we read in these in, in rows, and there are 10 rows each of 8 bytes, but you have to understand that this doesn't actually map to the physical position of the keys as they appear on the keyboard, so we have to look at this map here to see what each bit in each row will actually mean. Now, when it comes to reading these in, we use the in command on the Z80, and we use a specific mask when we set the B and C registers, and the computer's links will actually respond to a wide variety of different ports, so all we need to do is make sure that the top bit of C is 1, and the next bit is 0, that these two bits are 0, and in the B register, the value has to be from 0 to 1001 in bits. And um, this will allow us to read in from that port, and the result we get, each of the keys will map to this key map here. So let's have a look at the actual code that will do this for us. So here is the code. So the first thing we have to do is we set B to 0 because that's the first row we want to read in. Then we set the top bit of C to 1 and now we read in from the port into A. We store A into a buffer which we are defining as keyboard scanner key presses. This is just 16 bytes of memory we write the data to. And then all we do is we increase HL, increase B, moving on to the next row. Because you'll see, of course, all of these rows are consecutive bits. We then just continue this procedure until we get to this here, which means we've gone over the last port that we need to read from, and then we return. Now, this is, of course, raw data, so it won't allow us to print anything onto the screen. So what I've done is I've defined a hardware key map here, which is the respective ASCII keys for each of the buttons. What this allows us to do is to create a little test program like this. So here's the computer's links, and now if I press the A key on my keyboard, you can see an A appears. If I press B, you see a B appears, and I can type 1, 2, 3, and I can press keys like up, down, left, and right. So you can see here, we are reading the keys in and converting them to some kind of ASCII. So we've got a basic start of a simple keyboard routine, and of course none of this uses the firmware, so this is totally multi-platform. This is the same code as I ran on all of my other systems. Just because I've written that extra driver, it now works on the computer's links as well. And this is how I was able to get Grime Z80 ported to the computer's links so quickly. Now, if you want to know how we actually convert that hardware key map to visible key presses, please take a look at lesson eight in the multi-platform series of my tutorials, because this is the same code as we looked at then. So you don't need to know anything new if you've already seen this series, but if you're interested in using the example I've given today for the computer's links, you need to see that episode as well. So that's really all there is to reading the keyboard in from the computer's links, at least when compared to the other systems, very straightforward. So what about the sound? Well, like systems like the ZX Spectrum, the computer's links uses a beeper speaker. This is a very crude sound system where we can create blips. These blips will be part of a tone, but they're not the complete tone. We have to make a blip, then we have to pause for a while, then we have to make another blip, and we have to keep doing this. Effectively, we're building up the waveform one blip at a time. So you can see here's the first blip, here's the pause, here's the second blip, here's the pause, here's the third blip, and so on. And so we have to work out the time we want between these blips and the number of times we're going to make the blips to create the total tone. So this will all depend on the pitch we actually want. Now, unlike the ZX Spectrum, which had no volume control, the computer's links has quite a good one. It has six bits of volume control for when we define the blips. The real problem, though, with these beeper speakers is it's very hard to do anything else at the same time as making the tone. So unlike an AY sound chip, which can be playing music while the game's running, on the computer's links, really, it's very hard to do anything other than beep and pause while you're beeping and then carry on with the game. But anyway, it's still definitely worth looking at. So we've got a very long piece of code here, which we'll have a look at in just a moment. But the principle is basically, we make a bleep to the speaker, we wait for a while, we make the bleep again. Now, with the computer's links, we, if we want the noise to be distorted, 
then we will use a, some random source and we will use the R register for that random source. We also need to read in the volume level and use that accordingly. Now, when I do my tutorials, if you've not seen them before, I create a program called Chibi Sound. This is my basic sound driver, which was used by Grime Z80. It takes a single byte as its source data and the top bit will be if noise is enabled. The second bit will be if the volume is high or low and the remaining bits will all be the pitch. So we need to take that pitch, work out the amount of time we're gonna pause, turn on noise if required and set the volume volume high or low on the computer's links. So let's have a look at that source code now. So here's the computer's links Chibi Sound code. Now here there's a bit of an add-on. Because the system basically pauses while the sound is playing, I had to make it possible to make the sound very short so that gaming would work. So there's this specialist set ZX function for Chibi Sound that only works on beeper speaker systems. Although it's not a ZX Spectrum, this code is almost identical to the ZX Spectrum version. So that's why we've got these ZXs lurking around. Here's where Chibi Sound starts, and we're going to use self-modifying code. So we're either going to set a beep as our sound or some distortion as our sound. So first we need to check if we are applying the noise effect, and if we are, we need to turn that distortion on by using the R register as our source of sound. Once we've got to here, we've now done that. We then work out if we're using high or low volume, and if we are using high volume, then we will use some self-modifying code here, and we will set our volume effect, which we'll see later. So this is a self-modifying code label here. Next, we need to work out our pitch and how long we're going to wait. And we do this by shifting all of these bits around here. A bit long-winded, but it does work. I'm, I'm sure there's a better way of doing it. Uh, it just, it's good enough for now, it's kind of thing. You're never gonna get great sound out of the beeper speaker, so I guess I was kind of slacking off when I wrote this. So when we get down to here, we are actually going to make the sound. So we load in the last sound we made and we flip the bits accordingly, and then we keep the bits relating to the volume level we're playing at, which was of course self-modified by this routine here. Now, once we've done that, we then out to the appropriate port. Now, once again, on the computer's links, there are a wide variety of ports that will respond, but the one I'm using is hexadecimal 84 here. Actually, again, all of these bits here can be anything, but I'm using 84 just because it works and that makes sense to me. So anyway, we out to this port here, and then we are using self-modifying code here to work out our delays that we need to do. So that's how it works. So let's actually hear Chibi Sound making some sound. So here you can see, this is the byte that we're passing into the Chibi Sound. So you can hear the loud noise at the moment, and then the noise will become quieter. And then as we get to 8-0, you'll go to pure tones. And then as we go below 4-0, the tones will become quieter. And so you can see here, through the beeper speaker, even though the sound isn't really very advanced, it's perfectly adequate. And you know, it's great for a Space Invaders type game or a little, um, a little simple game that just needs the odd beep. You wouldn't really want to do music on it, but to be honest, it can do that as well if you're feeling adventurous. Anyway, that's what I wanted to show you today. You can see now we can make sounds, we can read in the keyboard, and thanks to last week's lesson, we can do the graphics. And this was all it took for me to get Grime Z80 working on the computer's links. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching today, and goodbye.